Hey you guys, welcome to the channel. It's me, Andres Salazar, Art of Comics. We talk about comics, graphic novels, illustration, and some fine art. And uh, today we're gonna talk about Ed Piscor's Red Room. So this will not become the Ed Piscor cha channel. Um, if I could, I would make this the Bill Sienkiewicz channel, Keith Giffen channel, or the Kyle Baker channel. <laughs> But uh, I was emotional last week, still this week, some lingering feelings, and I felt very inspired to purchase. You guys know, uh, if you don't know, I'm a huge, huge fan of Hip Hop Family Tree, uh, and I think I'm going to do a video of covering this because it's just so freaking good, and it meant so much to me. So... Uh, because of the events of last week, we're not going to go through all that. We're just going to talk about the work. I felt inspired to buy this book. I bought it and I read it in one day, which isn't hard to do. But I was, here's the thing. I've studied comics. Not only am I a creator, I study them. I've read comics for decades. Not just from the 80s on, but I've then went back to like Little Nemo, right? That's probably the farthest back I've went. I went to Little Nemo forward. I've studied them all. EC Comics, Warren Publishing, freaking Liberty, Dell, Scrooge McDuck, what have you, right? Little Abner, um, Noel Sickles. Anyway, it goes on and on. Toth. And I'm a fan. I'm a student of the medium and I'm a fan. And after reading Ed Piscor's book, Red Room, which I've never read before, I didn't think I would dig the the material, you can tell. I mean, you could tell it back here, but this just reiterates he's a student as well of the game. He's a student of the game, man. He 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 did some great choices here and I want to go through it. So, uh quick takeaway is I like this a lot, and I'm not gonna b blow smoke, okay? I have always felt that if I didn't like something very strongly, I won't talk about it. The only book I talked about that I didn't like was was Capra, Copra, Capra, Capra, something like that. I think it's called Capra. I just did not like that book, and I did a video for it, but that's the only one I've ever done. If I like it, I'm gonna share and talk about it. And I'm not going to blow smoke up anybody. It's like, look, this is just me, my thoughts from my experience, from the way I see things in this kind of, uh, in my opinion, erudite view, educated, formally and informally trained view. Okay. And I read this and I was captivated and I freaking like it a lot. And the way to know if I'm going to like it is, would I buy this? Would I buy volume two and three? The answer is yes, I will buy two and three. I liked it enough. There is enough, enough of a mystery. There's enough of the world building. There's enough of like thing like that happening that really gets me stoked. So uh, with that said, um, despite my earlier prejudice of the theme topic, that kind of thing, uh, after reading, and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling it. So why don't we turn the camera over? Let's dive down into this, and let's talk about Ed Piscor's Red Room. Let's do it. Are you ready? Okay, homies, let's do this. Let's talk about some Red Room. Um, Hip Hop Family Tree, we will do another episode of that. This is massive, I love the size of it. It's kind of a pain for the shelf, but you love it. Um, this is just the normal standard kind of comic book size. And I was kind of surprised by that because this other stuff is big. Now, if I were to hazard a guess, it would be because he wanted to do these in a floppy format. And I think he's kind of he mentions in the forward that the floppy format is his kind of preferred format. So I think because of that, they went old school floppies and, um, and that's why he didn't do the big, the big style, but that's just me kind of guessing. Um, so yeah, it's, this is 
The volume one covers the first four issues. Part one and two are a kind of, it's a one story. And then three and four are two separate stories that are happening uh, in this same world. So the premise is, it's, it reminds me of like Hostel. So as far as like mainstream media, it, it reminds me a lot of the movie Hostel by LA, Eli Roth a while back. And um, it's got that deal. But instead of rich people paying an organization to do killing... This is rich people watching people do the killing, right? In these like chat rooms, kind of YouTube style comments are flying while they're uh, doing the murders. And uh, it turns out both, well, of course, the, there's the victims who are victims, but even the murderers are potentially uh, victims or ransomed or some, somehow in this in this world That's that is a... Uh, Gonna chew them up, so to speak. Um, no pun intended. So there's, so there's just a lot of really cool things that some, that uh, Ed does in this book. One of them is he does a brilliant job of making this very thematic with the visuals. I do like the red. I like the duotone kind of colors here. So um, this kind of duotone shade is really nice the words are pure white and everything else has this like kind of a cream color to it which i really dig also a lot of the book is are these um like panels that are old school like windows 98 windows and i really dig that he's going back looking at some of the iconography and and like uh, the the words, the dial, you know, these kind of like the um, font, you know, all these little like bits. It just looks really cool. I like the way um, he does that as well as the innovative deaths, right? This is part of the reason why you go see Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, Jason, all those kind of movies is for the unique deaths, right? The ingenuity, the kind of cleverness. And so he does some of that in here and that's kind of like what you're, so like for instance, right? Um, jaw getting viced, right? This dude in, you know, medieval on dead ass, which is like somebody just basically this big blade that's going through their body with these weights and their blocks on their limbs. You know, so it's pretty horrific. Um, there's the forward. He talks about COVID. I don't really want to go too much into the forward because one could potentially read into this. And I don't really want to go into like his mental process of making the book and if that's connected to recent events because it's just me supposition and guesswork. And so I just want to focus on the product and the process of making it. That's what I feel like I'm most equipped to speak about. And I feel like any other, the, the crazy horse shit that's out there, let them deal with it. But I, this channel is not going to talk about the political elements to the events last week. I just am not going to go there because I, it's too much. And I don't, wanna, I don't want any of it. And no one knows the truth because it's just like, we just don't know. Okay. So I ain't, I ain't doing it. There you have it. Okay. Um, so skip the forward. You can make your own conclusions. Uh, and these are kind of fun little panels. I mean, it would be kind of cool just to have these like daily strips if you want to be really grisly. And just like every day you get another like strip of like this, this you know, pun and some kind of a horrific tor th torture thing. That would be actually kind of fun, right? I mean, you'd probably run out after 30 or 40, but it's kind of cool. And I do like, this one's an MPG. This one's a WAV file, you know, a WMU V file. That's just kind of fun. Okay. So, Bloody Baptism. This is uh, basically the birth of one of these, these killers or performers, Red Room performers. And um, let's just chat about it. 
one of the things that I really appreciate with Ed Piscor's work, and he does it with Hip Hop Family Tree, but maybe not as much. Let me just look real quick. Let's take a quick gander at this book. See, this has, it has that level of just like rendering and stuff in here. Maybe not quite as much, but also remember that like because of the the uh, like filters and textures he's adding, it's, some of it's kind of hard to like maybe pin down. But I would say this is more. This has more, a little more like of a R crumb kind of feel, just because of the you know the body hair, the duo tone, you know zip a tone. Uh, deleter sheets that he's like scratching away. There's, so there's these layers of texture and line making that it's creating form. Form being like, you know, a three dimensional form object. So it does give it like a little bit of like a, like I said, a crumb kind of feel to it. Um, but yeah, we're getting to know the new, the characters here. This like a uh, clerk. I really like this. This is a really nice, panel when I turn the pages like, oh, okay this is cool like this is like you know uh it's dynamic it's really fun it's it's just a great panel this, I'm sure this was he saw something very much like this in like a million books right back in the day in the 50s and 40s I mean this looks like almost like a maybe a Will Eisner type of thing um or again like some of these old French French comics um but yeah, I really, I really dig, I dig the, uh, the, the, the work, Dutch Dangle. It's just, it's good stuff. And the story is, you know, it does have that kind of '80s horror, you know, story of this tragic things happen to this man. We don't know what's happening. Oh, another thing about, but the book, which I like, is you get the four issues, which is pretty fun. But then, so in my book, in Prime Missouri, I put like four maybe six pages of like the story, right? Like here, you can see an alternate version. These are like roughs I did of like six pages. He does all of them. You have the whole first issue, 32 pages, which is very different. Like this actually, this first draft is a very different version than what he winds up publishing. But you, he bring, gives you the whole damn thing, which I think is very cool. That's a very nice like, package there it's a nice thing those who are interested in process and just how things change through different versions and drafts i thought that was very cool also on top of that he does like a um again something i did with with my book in the deluxe version of pariah he does this like commentary and now my, my book had a commentary like side by side. So it was like the book and then on the side had commentary. But this is like, it's the whole freaking thing. The first two, two arcs, you get this whole commentary and he goes through each page and he mentions something. I think that's very cool too. So um, it that's a nice, that's a really nice kind of uh, behind the scenes extra stuff. So I really appreciate both of those. It would have been nice maybe to have the covers of the single issues. And I heard that there were so many like uh, alternate versions and, and alternate covers. Would, that would have been fun. But screw it. This is much better. So um, just a little shout out to the production ideas of it. I thought that was really freaking cool. Okay. Back to the story. So yeah. So we, we're having this dialogue between some people watching the chat. One of the great things about this book probably my favorite thing about the book really is not the killing and this stuff. It's the chatting, the chats here, what's going on. If you've ever been to 4chan, if you've ever been to Reddit, if you've ever been to YouTube comments, I mean, if you've been to these places, which of course you have, this dialogue feels very familiar, very modern, very accurate. Um, I just, I totally dig it. And there's some fun, like, words in here. Chaykin is in here. There's, like, Gary Groth, Groth's in, Groth's in here. There's different, like, people and, and names, which is fun. And um, that banter is very real. Uh, so I appreciated that. So we've got, basically, the chat log and the image of these videos as it's happening. And then there's someone, there's a couple people 
you could tell by the types of word bu balloons that they're doing. Um, they're having a conversation about it as well. And we find out who that is, is this family who are, who are kind of managing this company called Pentagram Pictures. So the, the, the concept is there's five main kind of red room entities or companies those five families, those five companies come from like, I guess the original five mafioso families, right? So it's like, it's kind of a, a connection to the mob and, and that kind of idea. So uh, cool, cool idea like that. Uh, this is a kind of a fun scene where this hillbilly guy comes and helps them out by getting these, these victims, these little hippie victims. And uh, I like this where the you see the, which I don't know this painting. I didn't recognize it, but it's it's, it's up from somewhere. And you see it slowly open, and he just gets freaking stabbed by this crazy serrated knife. Um, we don't know who this little midgety dude is, but somebody. Then this reminds me of Daredevil. Um, this is a great. This is a great panel, by the way. This this whole page is really nice. This this is a very nice page. He did very good here. Uh, this reminds me of kind of Daredevil, some of those kind of scenes. Um, silhouettes are great, of course. This kind of repeating panel, classic. I mean, he's using all these great the lexicon of comics, dude. That's great. And then, um, yeah, there's just a lot of action. There's a lot of, like, grotesquerie. Is that a word? Grotesquerie? I think so. A lot of grotesquerie happening here. Um, daughter... So now basically the story is the daughter and father are alone. Their mother and other sibling was killed in a car wreck and they're just tore up by it. Hence the funeral scene. And she goes off with a friend. He's by himself and we don't know what he's going to do. But we see in the reflection of his glasses some maybe pornography. We don't know what. And there's all this like religious stuff too, so you know we're kind of showing the hypocrisy, which is kind of a very popular theme in today's society. Then we go to a lawyer, district attorney. Guess what? He's doing it. He's there too, watching poker face this other bad guy from another mafioso organization, and so we find out this. This lawyer works for the leader of Pentagram Pictures. And uh, and so now we learn about this guy who is has a hazard pale face. They they bring the um the killers in on these like they're not even refrigerated. I don't know, somehow they like knock them out put them in a box and ship them home and ship them there. I don't really understand all that. It hasn't been shown uh hasn't been explained yet but the idea is that even the killers aren't necessarily free they even though they might get paid they too have some extreme means of secrecy and such but yeah i um i think it's good i think it's good and there's some really nice, these are, this is a nice panel, some great imagery here. It still has that kind of, I'll call it, people would say cartoony. I, I don't like to use the word cartoony, but it's definitely have, has a um, caricature. Caricature is the word, you know, style to it. But it works really well. Some great, this is a great panel here with these like, doubts and, and sadness and embarrassment kind of ideas and these different laughing. It's very good. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if I, I'm not even really talking more about it. I'm just going to say it was very good. I liked it a lot. I was impressed. And I want, I'm going to have to get more of these little biscuits. These are, this is good. Even if I don't like it, like, uh, I don't want to sit there. It's not for my kid to read. It's not something I want to read every day. 
but I appreciate what it takes to design this. You know, you get the concept of it. That's that's hard enough. And then to execute on this, right? And he does a very good job of making it realistic and um, pretty freakish, right? And he, you know, mission accomplished. If this wasn't good, don't get it mixed up. If this didn't, if this wasn't of quality, you think Fanographics would publish it? You think they're just like, oh yeah, well, you made this a lot of money with hip hop. We'll just keep going. No, they wouldn't. So, and he was a student of the game. He, this was his life, was studying, loving, living, drawing, creating comics. That was his jam. And, um, and uh, you know, it's pretty damn good. It's pretty good. The last two stories are pretty epic. It goes through the life of these other these other uh, killers, so they're not connected directly. It's not a like a one story, but um, and then also what's nice too is he does the um, he's doing this EC Comics deal. So he's you know this is the cryptocurrency keeper, right? So total crypt keeper deal. It's got the whole vibe of EC Comics, uh, Tales from the Crypt. So that's really cool. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, so yeah, he's he's pulling from all those things to give it that feel. And he does a damn good job. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. I think it's good. What I'm, what I'm going to say. Um, if you guys are close to Ventura, California, come to my solo exhibition. My art exhibition is May 3rd is the opening reception. It's all month of May until like May the 25th. So come by, check that out. I have a Patreon. I got my new comic on the web that I'm doing called Weekend Warriors, which is like an isekai fantasy uh, fish out of water type of story. And um, what else? And then a bunch of other stuff. So we will do Hip Hop Family Tree. I also have a Frazetta book we're going to do. And I got some other stuff. So thanks for watching. Take care, guys.